Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to my channel. I hope your weekend has been great, and I hope your day has just been phenomenal. Now, today we're going to be talking about this, my Galaxy Blackridge Longbow. And not about the bow. This is not a bow, another bow review. But if you recall the, the video that I posted some time back reviewing this bow, you'll notice that I talked about the hand shock that this thing produces. And I talked about it a lot because, man, it produces some hand shock. And there's no doubt about it. But the thing about this bow is it's a great shooter. It's aesthetically pleasing. The grip is phenomenal on this thing. It fits really well in the hand. But because of the hand shock, I've not really shot it a lot. I've kind of kept it hanging on the wall back there. And I hate that because I do really enjoy this bow with the exception of the hand shock. Now trying to minimize that, I've tried a lot of different things. I've tried, um, you know, of course the string silencers to slow down the string as it's, as it's shooting. Uh, I've tried different brace heights. I've gone from the recommended seven all the way up to an eight and a half brace height and all the measurements in between trying to minimize that. And I did finally get it to calm down a good bit around seven and a half inches, but it's still, after about 10 or 20 shots, man, this thing becomes uncomfortable to shoot. That's not to say it's a bad bow. It's just that I really needed to figure out how to make it work so I could get out and enjoy shooting this longbow. Now, I read a lot of things in forums. I read a lot of uh, articles about longbows in general and hand shock and how to minimize that and what's the best way to get rid of it or make it so that it's very minimal at best and it doesn't bother you while you're shooting. And one of the things that I kept coming back to was, of course, changing the string material that I was making my string out of. Now, all of my strings I make out of Dacron B50 or B55. Uh, for my recurves and that has worked really well for me over the the course of a few years i've not had any issues out of it until this beast enters the picture now i tried an endless loop i tried uh, a decron b50 i tried a 55 flemish twist i tried all the different settings with it and i could not get rid of the hand shock again after about 18 to 20 shots i was just ready to sling this thing across the yard because it just became uncomfortable to shoot now I didn't want this bow to go to waste. So again, reading the forums, looking through the information, trying to get as much as I could about long bows and about hand shock, what I saw as a reoccurring theme was the use of fast flight string on these bows. And not just these bows in particular, but all modern bows, because luckily this is reinforced tips. The phenolic limb tips are reinforced to accept a fast flight string. And I was on the fence with it. I was like, is it really going to make a difference? Is it really going to, you know, help uh, minimize the hand shock? So I went ahead and, and made the purchase. I purchased some Dynaflight 97, which was what I was seeing as everybody was recommended. Now, of course, there are more expensive and better band, excuse me, better brands of fast flight out there. But the, the Dynaflight 97 is what everyone was suggesting to try on the longbow to reduce the hand shock. Now, a little bit behind that, whenever you draw the bow back, you're putting energy in these limbs and that energy has to go somewhere. And on release, a lot of that energy is focused into the arrow itself. So using a heavier arrow is going to help uh, transfer that energy and, and spend it from the, the limbs, if you will. But that being said, I shoot carbon arrows, so they're not very heavy to begin with, other than my inserts and my field tips up front, uh, which actually make them heavier and do a lot to the spine. Uh, but what's happening with the energy in, this, in these limbs is on a Dacron string, what you'll notice is because it's a stretchy material and more of a spongy feel than this fast flight material, What's happening is you're getting a lot of that energy that's still in these, in these limbs as, that, as the limbs are vibrating to a stop. And what's happening with that energy is it's coming through the limb and stopping right here in the riser itself. Now, these short risers are really not helping that hand shock. So that energy coming from the limbs into the riser and the short riser not being able to dissipate that energy, you're going to feel it here in your hand and of course in your arm. Now, the thing with Dynaflight or the fast flight material that we're talking about here, there's less stretch, there's less give to this string material. So what's happening is it's actually stopping these limbs from vibrating faster, which is of course reducing the hand shock. Now I've got a couple of clips of videos that I took yesterday to show you the difference between Dacron B55 and Dynaflight 97, which is what I have my bow strung up with now.
And what I was seeing with those video clips is it's very telling as to why I was getting the amount of hand shock and just an uncomfortable shooting from this bow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump in and show you these video clips. Now I slowed them down so you can actually see the vibrations and I want you to pay attention to the top limb because that's all I could really get into the, the field of view so you could still see it. But I really want you to pay some attention here as I'm releasing those shots. Now I'll be shooting the Daycron B55 first and then I will switch to the fast flight. That way you can see just how much, how much energy is vibrating through this limb and ending up in this riser here. But again, overall, the bow is a great bow. So if you're on the fence about buying this, if you try this one little trick that I'm telling you about right now, this is going to become a great shooter for you. And you're really going to get a lot of enjoyment out of this longbow. So let's jump into the clips. We'll look at it. Hopefully you can see what I'm talking about. And I'll kind of, I'll try to narrate that for you. And then that way you can make your own decision, which you think would be a better string for the longbow or the recurve that you may be shooting now. So let's jump into the clips right now. Now watch the top limb as I'm shooting and watch the amount of vibration in that top limb. And the reason it's vibrating is because the string is still stretching. It's a stretchy material and it's allowing that vibration to continue. And that energy is going through that limb and into that riser, creating the hand shock that you're feeling. Now we're gonna to switch to the Dynaflight 97. Now there is still some vibration in the limbs, but because the string doesn't stretch as much, it actually controls that vibration and stops it quicker, as you notice by the video here. And what's happening when you reduce or stop that vibration quicker, it's reducing the amount of energy that's transferring into that riser, into your hand, creating the hand shock. So for me, Dynaflight 97 is the way to go. Well, there you go. Hopefully you saw what I was talking about, about the energy stored in these limbs upon the release of the arrow and what's happening to that energy that's traveling down through uh, the limbs and actually into the riser. Uh, noticeable difference to me, very big difference to me. Now I do love this, this Dynaflight material <laughs> on this bow. It has minimized the hand shock almost to nothingness. Now I do still feel it a little bit, but it's nothing like it was before. And I can comfortably shoot this bow now for long periods of time just by making that one little change. Now, of course, I am going to tinker with my arrows and see if I can't put something heavier through the bow just to see how it handles, how it performs, you know, and of course, longevity of the string itself. Uh, I did just make a standard Flemish twist, uh, put this in. Uh, so far, I've not had any issues setting it at seven and a half inch brace height. This bow shoots great now, and I would recommend this string material for anybody that's struggling with hand shock in their bow. Now I say that with a little bit of caution. You must have reinforced limb tips. Now luckily these are phenolic reinforced just like all of my bows. So I'm going to try fast flight on those as well and see if that actually helps with the uh, performance and maybe even, you know, uh, taking away a little bit of the hand shock from those bows as well, which is very minimal to begin with. Now, the one thing about this material is it does introduce a lot of extra noise, of course, string noise when you're releasing the shot. But you know what? That's to be expected. There's going to be a trade-off for every little thing that you do. So again, I'm not trying to twist your arm to buy this string material, but what I am saying is if you are struggling with hand shock, this is probably one of the easiest and simple fixes to take away a lot of that so you can enjoy shooting your bow. So thank you for coming by. I really appreciate you guys subscribing to my channel. And you know what? The comment section, guys, I love the comment section. You guys are phenomenal. I love all the little tips and all the little information you're dropping. I love to interact with you in the comment section. So please leave comments and I will always respond to you. Also, if you're just finding my channel or stumbling in here and you like the content that you see, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the notifications bell. That way, when we do post future content, you get the notification, come in, hang out with us for a little while. But I do appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh, it means more to me than you know that you take the time to watch my videos and subscribe to my channel. So I hope this has helped you today. And as always, I hope you have a great day, a better day tomorrow, and a wonderful week ahead of you. And until next time.